In this video, I'm going to share this little ballpark process for figuring out, in terms of generalities, what organ or location or pathway in the body is most likely the cause of your health issues. You know, when I was staying in a monastery in China, which was actually near Chengdu, I had this conversation with a doctor of traditional Chinese medicine, and we got into this great discussion about where health problems come from, right? What is the actual root cause of certain issues people have, especially when they're so chronic for some people, years and years and years. And he said something that really aligned with the classics of traditional Chinese medicine when he said, you have to understand what is a root problem and what is a branch problem. So in this video, I'm going to share this little quiz I've put together to help you figure out what is a root problem and what is a branch problem. Hey guys, it's Dr. Alex Hein, board licensed acupuncturist and doctor of traditional Chinese medicine and author of the health book, Master of the Day. So let's jump in. Now in traditional Chinese medicine, we focus a lot on trying to understand what is the root, i.e. constitutional or genetic tendency your body has that is often the root problem. And the branch problem is typically just what is the symptomatic pattern that we're seeing right now, right? So say for example, someone can have ordinarily very, very good digestion genetically. And then that guy or that woman takes on a stressful role as a leadership position in a company in New York or in LA, they're working crazy hours and they eat like crap. So as a result, they're coming into me because they have massive acid reflux, their bowels are all funky, and they're not sleeping well. Now, five years ago, they may not have had a single one of those problems that may have been purely damaged from lifestyle. But then you have other people, like for example, me. I grew up in a family that always ate healthy. Even when I went to college, I was still cooking healthy meals and eating oatmeal for breakfast and that kind of thing. And yet ever since I was a kid, was always complaining about my digestion. And so while I was the kid that was eating so meticulously and eating such a specific narrow diet, my friends were eating Taco Bell and they weren't having any issues with their digestive system. And I'm over here eating, you know, sauteed greens, veggies and an egg, and I couldn't digest anything. So that points to really a clear constitutional root, as we call it, or a genetic tendency. So for some people, there is a very, very strong genetic tendency that runs in families, and we use the word constitution. For my own constitution, a lot of what I saw in my maternal line as I looked through it with a traditional Chinese medicine lens was that on my maternal side, there was my mom who constantly complained of GI issues, whether or not she'll admit it, and my grandmother, who complained of the exact same issues, whether or not she'll admit it. Sometimes people don't talk about the issues or sometimes they just take Pepto-Bismol all day long and they don't think they have a problem. But I can look back and see, wow, okay, there really was a root problem, a constitutional genetic tendency running in that family. Other issues I may have had throughout my own life can revolve around overworking and overstressing and in general doing too much. But the constitutional root of it, the origin, the core through line of your life, like that one problem you keep having under stress, that is the root problem. Now, the reason this isn't talked about in conventional medicine is that, frankly, 95% of conventional medicine purely is symptomatic medicine. And there's nothing wrong with that, but it doesn't fix people, right? You will never take an antidepressant and be better six months after taking it. You will never take hypothyroid medication and in six months be healthier than you were before if you stop taking it. You will never take GERD or acid reflux medication and in six months be healthier than you were before. They're not designed to do that. So we want to get down to the root. And that's why I want to share this brand new little root cause quiz I've put together here. So as I go through this quiz I've put together, guys, you can actually go and download it. It's the first link below this video. So you can have a digital copy that you can actually check off and score yourself on, right? So this is like a 10 page document. I've also put together a whole bunch of related resources and links to other videos we've shot on these exact symptoms and organs. And that's gonna be something really, really helpful. So download it below and we'll walk through this together. So let's go through five or so organ networks. You know, in traditional Chinese medicine, when I say something like the person has what's called spleen chi deficiency, most of these functions and these symptoms don't actually anatomically relate to the spleen organ. It relates more often to the pancreatic function, especially pancreatic enzyme production. It relates to issues with the stomach, issues with the small intestine. So when we try to translate these ancient concepts, like what's called translated as spleen chi deficiency, it really is a lot more complex and it really does involve a lot more other locations in the body. So let's do an overview of the top five organ networks that I see people having problems with. And then we'll jump into a few diagnostic symptoms of each. So organ network number one, we'll call it the spleen, stomach, and pancreas. Now, when we're talking about this diagnosis of spleen chi deficiency that is very commonly diagnosed from acupuncturists, a lot of what we're seeing is primarily the symptoms revolve around the digestive system. Like the textbook person with this kind of diagnosis typically has a bit lower appetite. They typically are thinner, more pale complexion, 
They get a food baby a lot after meals, prone to loose stools, SIBO, gut dysbiosis issues, and sometimes they also have low immunity and catch colds easily. So if you take a look at this little first quiz here, we see issues like abdominal bloating, unintended weight loss, fatigue, undigested food. There are some women's health issues here and also issues like chronic throat clearing. So if you have issues, a constitutional genetic tendency to have spleen, stomach, pancreas issues, you will often see some of these symptoms throughout your life, especially once you are imbalanced, right? You go through a bout of insomnia or a long bout of stress. You go through a divorce or something happens. You will see the constitutional root that remember, it's the through line, right? It's like your core tendency under stress. You'll see that come out here. Organ network number two, we'll call the kidney and the bladder. Now, traditionally, when people have a constitutional kidney and bladder origin, root cause of a lot of their issues, some anatomically relate to that organ, right? These are people who have nighttime urination since they were a kid. They have urinary frequency, particularly worsened with anxiety. If you're under 50 and not a man, it is strongly correlated with anxiety. Most of the women that I see come in that have urinary frequency, I treat it the same way that I treat anxiety and the urinary frequency goes away. For these kinds of people, let's start with the most obvious ones. We see symptoms like frequent urination, nighttime urination. It also includes things like sexual dysfunction, but also the kidney, very important, is one of the organs we say is related to like adrenal function. So for example, lots of people with what we call kidney chi deficiency or kidney yang deficiency can have symptoms of basically HPA axis or adrenal fatigue, right? They can have things like palpitations, insomnia, anxiety. So for these kinds of people, we also see one final thing that you don't see is autoimmune disease. Lots of issues related to autoimmune disease are related to the kidneys in traditional Chinese medicine. That is something that you will never hear. And interestingly, lots of autoimmune diseases do affect the kidneys too. Organ network number three, let's call this lung, spleen, large intestine, and mucosal issues. Now for this kind of organ network, you know, you do see overlap with what we talked about the spleen pancreas. For example, lots of people that are genetically very phlegmy, <clears throat> they clear their throat a lot, they also have postnasal drip, and they also sometimes have a tendency towards catching respiratory viruses going around. So the mucosa you see in the lungs, you see in the ear, nose, and throat organs, you also see it in the stomach. All of these areas that can produce mucus to buffer the delicate lining of uh, the mucosa here. So issues involving mucosa also fall into this bucket. So when we talk about this, you know, for this kind of organ network, we see issues with chronic coughs with sputum, can also be chronically clearing the throat, chronic post-nasal drip. You see issues with catching colds easily, aversion to AC or drafts, or even chronic runny noses. We say this is the lung and spleen and large intestine. So again, this person can present with a lot of GI issues, but also lots of respiratory issues and lots of ENT issues. Organ network four, we're gonna say is the heart, kidney, and small intestine. So when we're talking about the heart, for example, of course it does relate to functions that are related to the anatomical heart, right? Like for example, issues with circulation and issues with blood pressure, issues that can be related to cardiovascular disease. But the heart also relates to the nervous system. We talked about the heart being like the emperor, the center of the spirit of a person. And so what happens is when there's a, what we call a diagnosis of heart chi or heart yang deficiency. This mirrors symptoms of sympathetic dominance, heart palpitations, tachycardia, and elevated heart rate, you're under a lot of stress, and definitely all kinds of irregular heartbeats. Issues related to the anatomical heart, but also, let's call it the physiological heart. Symptoms that are physiological in nature and not structural in nature, so stress response. Palpitations, elevated heart rate, spontaneous sweating, issues with even dizziness, but also lots of issues with sleep. And the final organ network, we're gonna call this the liver, gallbladder, and the triple warmer. This is the only organ in traditional Chinese medicine that does not have an anatomical correlate, meaning there's no organ that is the triple warmer. It explains several zones of the body and larger physiological functions. When we talk about the liver and the gallbladder, what are some of the main symptoms people see? The most common symptoms that I see related to acid reflux, GERD, acid reflux, all kinds of upper GI issues. You also see chronic sinusitis falling into this picture. Lots of people come in with chronic inflammation in the sinuses. We treat it from what we call a liver and gallbladder pattern, which means an issue with inflammation in the body. Now, paradoxically, you also see issues with bowels and women's health issues. So for example, you can see irregular menses, painful menses, dysmenorrhea. You can see women who get three cycles a year, uh, varying kinds of even PCOS sometimes relate to the liver and the gallbladder, we call liver blood stasis. Now, what do you do about all of this, right? Like, what if you've gone through, you've seen these, you've downloaded the guide below, and you're like, great, Dr. Alex, so what exactly do I do about 
what you call the heart or what you call the pancreas. So there's a number of things. Number one is I want you just to sit down and think back to throughout your life, what was the main pattern in terms of health issues when you got imbalanced? Maybe it was university. Maybe it was a stressful year. Maybe it was a relationship ending. What did that stressful year cause inside your body? Because not everyone gets migraines. Right? Not everyone gets irregular menses. Not everyone gets acid reflux. Think about why that is. That points to a constitutional or genetic tendency of your body under stress. From there, think about the branch problems. Those branch problems, either they relate to an unresolved root problem or they relate to damage from lifestyle. Like I had constitutional GI issues my whole life, no matter how healthy I ate. And then later on, I had issues with insomnia and palpitations and panic attacks, but that was damage from overworking. So recognizing what's the root, what's the branch can be very helpful. Beyond that, the last page in this free guide is a link to a bunch of these little videos that we've shot over the last year or two that can help you understand symptoms of that organ and what to do about it. So there's a whole bunch of little links to other prior videos there that will help, but I think that's a good starting point. Now, I hope this guide helps you guys. Don't forget, if you want to take this a little bit further, I see a limited number of new patients every month in my clinic in Los Angeles or virtually via telemedicine. So if you want to reach out, just go to the link below this video or go to dralexheining.com forward slash clinic and you can book or call me there. And then don't forget, there's another really good video on figuring out what is the root cause of your symptoms right here.